Silas. How the hell can you ask that much for out-of-date shortbread biscuits, man? <laughs> I don't care if they are not in with a bloke playing the bloody bagpipes on the front. No, no, I'll give it a miss, bud. Aye, and the same to you. <laughs> the world have gone crazy, man. Business is terrible. I haven't moved a thing since them little pots of bubbles with a plastic hoop in. And that was three weeks ago. Well, what you put it down to, Richard? Well, the euro slipped dramatically against the yen, ma'am. It might be that. <laughs> <laughs> that again might be the bus strike, it's hard to say. <laughs> no, the entrepreneurial spirit in South Wales is dead, ma'am. Never mind, son. Hoffman, Charlie, come on, time to go. All right, Mrs. Everwhite. Oh, uh, say hello to Dad for me, Mum. Give him my love, will you? Yes, I will, son. I will. Hey, we'll nick some flowers in the way, Mrs. Everwhite. Right. <laughs> there, boys, look. Very artistic, Mrs. Everwhite. Aye. Like a little snooker table, it do look. Here lies George Stalin Heppelwhite, born April 1st, 1924, died November 5th, 1956. He had only one leg. Hey, are you sure those flowers are all right, Mrs Heppelwhite? We can always get more. There's plenty about. No, they're lovely. Oh, hello, Brenda, love. Oh, hello, Mrs Heppelwhite. Been visiting your granddad's grave, have you? Yeah. Do you know Charlie and Hoffman, my son's apprentices? All right. Brenda's granddad was Isaac Griffiths. He was the town alcoholic for years. <laughs> You'd only see him lying in the square or outside the men's toilets. Oh, I... He was the first man to be dishonourably discharged from the British Army in World War II. He turned up at the training camp drunk, and he was still drunk four days later when they turfed him out, wasn't he, Brenda? He didn't remember anything about it. He thought he'd been on a bird-watching holiday in West Wales. <laughs> the only time I ever saw him sober was when me and my mum were to visit him in prison. Oh, what was he in for? He had butted the Lord Mayor of Bristol and broke his nose. <laughs> oh, good stuff! It was in all the papers. Cum pen old man attacks visiting dignitary in public toilet, it said. We were very proud. I still got the newspaper cuttings at home somewhere. Hey, my dad's alcoholic and all. He still held down a proper job, mind. And what did he do? Worked on a cart for the council. <laughs> That's man off my news to call him. Oh, he loved it. He used to find bottles and our bits of booze still in them. There's Providentia. You hardly ever see alcoholics now the way you used to. <laughs> they hardly ever soil themselves anymore. <laughs> they smell just like normal people. Better be off. The pubs will be open in ten minutes. <laughs> Goodbye, Brenda. Aye, uh, so long. Bye. Oh, she's a nice young woman. I'm not sure these flowers seem right now. Don't worry, Mrs. Applewhite. Leave it to me. I'll have a look around. <laughs> oh, thank you, love. That's the truth. Hey, I'll break. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen to this. She was only a gravedigger's daughter, but she'd like to lie under the sod. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one, Finn. Yes. What was her name, Richard? <laughs> oh. The girl who lied under the sod. Well, there was no girl, ma'am. It's, it's a joke, like. She didn't like it then, stuck up bitch. <laughs> hey, she was only a road layer's daughter. But she liked her asphalt. <laughs> <laughs> Same girl, is it? <laughs> oh, I think I'll sit down for a minute. And then later I'll... I'll stand up again. Hey, look, Figs, the sons of Cayo. Who are they? Well, they're like the Welsh al Qaeda, Mrs Applewhite. You don't deny that it was your organisation that set fire to Sam and Ella's hot dog stall, then? No, <laughs> oh, we did it. No, we did it, and we are proud that we done it. But why? 
Well, Dovrid, one of our special operatives in the field thought it was a cover for MFI. <laughs> MI5, you mean? Yes, 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 yes. Where is the... your special operative now? He's in hospital. <laughs> and he's got severe burns to his hands and face. And those, those, those fascist police are going to charge him when he gets out. Well, he is an arsonist. No, he's not. He's a married man. Well, <laughs> separated. See, it is the duty, no. The sacred duty of every true Welshman to drive the English invader from our land. Right enough, but Aye. Sam Diprose, the owner of the hot dog stall, denies having any link whatsoever with the security services. Well, well, <laughs> he would, wouldn't he? <laughs> Wait, um, that's it now. That was the man known only as the Red Dog, self-styled military commander of the Sons of Cayo. Now... Back to Jason in the studio. Yorworth Crowd is the Lord Mayor of the Greater Cumpen All Area. What's your reaction to this attack by the Sons of Cayo, sir? Well, all acts of violence are to be frowned upon, of course. But history has taught us that sometimes it takes extreme measures to bring about political change. Wales is a small country and we have too few genuine martyrs to let them be forgotten. Now, it's my firm intention to champion the cause of Welsh independence when... Well, and, of course, if I gain a seat in the upcoming European elections and uh, people can rely on me to do just that. You're worth quote. Thank you very much indeed. Right, that's it then, eh? That's it. Right, uh, how much do I get paid for this? Eh? <laughs> uh, cash will do nicely or a cheque made out to the wife? Uh, any freebies going, Jason? Um, we are actually still on air. <laughs> <laughs> Only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're with Crowd, now there's a handsome man. You see how handsome a man looks in a nice suit, Richard? Nah, no, no, turn it off, Charlie. Hey, let's play Day of the Living Dead, Charles. Aye, hey, no cheating this time, though. A zombie can't eat the ghoul. He can! He can eat anything he can fit into his mouth. You're not fussy, zombies. You must be a bloody zombie yourself, then. <laughs> uh, hey, an healthy appetite I got, Mrs. Everwhite, tonight. Yes, I like to see a man clear his plate. Uh, so you a perfect bloke would be a gutsy bastard in a nice suit, then, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> Provided he was one. <laughs> oh, look out, Charles! Oh, well, my head had been ripped off. <laughs> hey, listen to this, ma'am. A plan to put up a series of huge mobile phone masks in the Ronda area was approved yesterday by planning authorities. The first and largest are to be erected on the site of what is at present Compenol Cemetery. What? Aye. The graves in the cemetery are to be dug up and their occupants relocated to a deep-freeze facility in Ebbeville. <laughs> well, they can't do that, can they? It says here, man. The disinterment of the remains will begin at midnight next Sunday. Oh, Richard, what about your dad? Well, he'll be dug up with the rest of her money. What the hell's going on here? These are our relatives, man, our loved ones. We don't want them piled up one on top of one another in a fridge. In every bloody field! <laughs> no, right, we don't think. Mind you, some people do pay a lot of money to be frozen or dead in America. Do they? Oh, yeah, I saw it on the Discovery Channel, Mrs. Applewhite. Well, what's the point of that? I, uh, I don't know. I had to turn over for Auntie Crojo. <laughs> uh, it must be to keep them fresh. Aye, aye, probably, yeah. <laughs> Who the hell wants to keep dead people fresh? <laughs> They're supposed to rot, aren't they? <laughs> It's a rolling life, innit? I mean, if all the people who ever died was kept hanging about fresh in fridges, what sort of life would that be? Richard, it's horrific. Your dad would turn in his grave. We've got to put a stop to it. Ah, you're right, ma'am. Who's in charge of this, anyhow? Look, hey, hey, don't say. Hey, we can go and see Sergeant Ball and Claude, Mrs. Applewhite. They'd know. Yes, I'll get my hat and coat. It's a nightmare, man. You want your dad's last resting place to be his last resting place, don't you? Not his last but bloody one. <laughs> Dug up? Yes. 
They're going to put them in a fridge in Ebel Vale, Claude. Good God. Well, I'm not letting them dig my George up. He went through the horror of a Japanese prison camp when he was alive, poor Dab. I'm not having him treated like a bag of frozen peas. Now he's dead. <laughs> right enough, Mrs Applewhite. Whew. <sighs> My mum and dad were cremated, thank goodness. After they were dead, like. They wouldn't let them cremate me. What if I wasn't proper dead and buried alive? Being buried alive wouldn't exactly be a barrel of laughs either, my child. Exactly. And the other great advantage in being burnt is that no one can dig you up and tamper with your remains, like. What do you mean, tamper, Claude? Well, uh, there are those who. who do have carnival relations with deceased corpses, like. Never. Uh, Mrs. Everwhite, lads. Oh, Sergeant Ball. Mrs. Everwhite, I've got a bit of a dilemma, Sarge. They're going to dig up the graveyard and put the corpse of Mr. Applewhite Sr. in a fridge in Ebervale. Ah, yes. Kevin Communications and their mobile phone masts. But surely they can't just do something like this without asking anyone, Sergeant Ball. It's corporate corruption, Mrs. Applewhite. You know, company cars, checks in foreign bank accounts, weekends with high-class prostitutes in Myrtle Tidville. But can't you do something about it, Sergeant Ball? You know me, I'd love to, Mrs. Applewhite. But they're clever buggers. They always watch their backs. I can't stand the oity-toity sods. No, I'd like to have them one at a time on my own in a darkened urine and I'd give them something to ponder on. But, but um, unfortunately, I'm limited by the constraints of the legal system. Isn't there something we can do, Sergeant Ball? Uh, you could go to the town hall, planning department, let them know there's dissatisfaction amongst the general populace. Probably won't do any good, but you never know. Look, I told you, the chief planning officer is away on sick leave, in the Caribbean, with his secretary, Dawn. <laughs> Write a letter. I'm not writing a letter. My son's lost a book of stamps. I'm 76 years old. <laughs> well, why worry, then? You'll be joining your husband soon enough. You might even get put on the same shelf. Right, hey, hang on now. Hey, off. It's a bloke off the telly. What's the problem, Ernie? These people want to make a complaint to the planning office, Lord Mayor. Tell them to write a letter. I did. They won't. Throw them out, then. Hey, hang on now. You can't just throw us out. I can't, no. But Ernie can. We want to let you know we don't want my husband's remains dug up. It's not right. Oh, the graveyard. You're too late, Granny. It's signed, sealed and delivered. I wouldn't worry if I were you. There's nothing left of most of them. You could get a dozen or so in the same sack, so my advisors tell me. Sack? Oh, sorry, black bag, I mean. There's slime in the middle. Look, I don't have time for this. I'm being interviewed by Hugh Edwards in an hour. Eject them, Ernie. Right. There are two ways we can do this. Call my dad slime, did he? The cheeky sod. See, boys, that's what's wrong with this country. Our elected representatives are a bunch crawling, self-serving bastards. <laughs> Of the whales our ancestors died fighting for gone. The whales of leeks and daffodils. The whales of drunken revelry and good-natured violence. <laughs> the whales of going to the seaside on holidays for a fortnight and catching crabs. <laughs> it's been stolen from us boys by a bunch of bureaucrats. All they're interested in is feathering their own vests. Aye, <laughs> man's right there. <laughs> Uh, but they made a big mistake this time. They didn't realise they was dealing with me, Richard Applewhite. Uh, yeah, they did, Fig. We, we said, like... Go <laughs> on. Did they say anything? Well, he said you were a well-known nutter, Fig. He said you were a pathetic, broken clown and everyone knows it. <laughs> and then he laughed. He called you a diddle <laughs> Why? <laughs> he was probably mixing you up with someone else, but... Aye. 
Aye. <laughs> Richard, it's like a bad dream. To think of your poor dad up there in heaven, looking down helpless, standing there on his one leg, <laughs> his one wing drooping sadly at the sun, and all the other dead people, all the other angels. Oh, there, there, ma'am. Hey, you're right. It's not just us, is it? We'll call a public meeting here tomorrow night. Right, Vic. Great idea, but... Ma'am? Yes, son. Get the printing kit out. <laughs> well said, Brenda. Well said. The chair recognises Claude Cox. <laughs> For me, is it? Well, yes, Claude. Oh, right. What did you mean, the chair recognises me, Mr Applewhite? Well, it's a figure of speech, Claude. Technical-like. Oh, so they uh, don't really recognise me, then? <laughs> well, no, it's a chair, isn't it? <laughs> you don't recognise no one. <sighs> right. <laughs> so what was it you were going to say there, Claude? Oh, right. Well, I don't know if anyone else have thought of this, but I was thinking, maybe the dead having been disturbed from their rest, like, might rise up and walk the earth in search of revenge upon the living. <laughs> oh, don't say that, man. You've got a point. Oh. But and it's not us, is it? Who've disturbed them, like it's other people, isn't it? Hi, but they don't know that, do they? They'll just eat the first person they see. <laughs> the persons they should be eating will be in Cardiff, in their posh houses and that. <laughs> No, they won't get us. They'll all be in fridges in Ebbeville. You can't open a fridge from the inside. <laughs> and even if they managed it, it's people from Ebbeville they'd eat. <laughs> they'd never reach here. Not with the buses the way they are. No, no, no. no very good point, ma'am. Good point. Uh, anybody else? <clears throat> ah, Mrs Calls. <clears throat> My point is that I've read that mobile phone masts create electromagnetic fields. Well, that can't be good for anybody, can it, having magnetic electric fields around? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent point, Mrs Coles. Well, maybe the, these masts will suck people towards them like magnets in school. We'll end up stuck in them, like flies on fly paper. <laughs> Which, if you take my point, will make us easy pickings for the vengeful dead. Oh. <laughs> if they get you from ever they like. <laughs> scared I am. Everybody is, love. Who wants to be eaten by dead people? Mm -hmm. <laughs> what we need is a petition. Aye, a petition. Signed by all the concerned people in the area, stating our objections, and delivered to them bastards in the town hall. And we'll get the Valley Times to come and report on it for the paper. That'll rattle them up. That's a good idea, Fig. Aye, oh, it is. It's a bloody good idea. Hey, Mum, go and get the printing kit out again. <laughs> Mr. Applewhite, your petition against Kevin Communications' plans to build a mobile phone mast in Compenol Cemetery has been rejected. Signed, Ernie Roberts. Is that all it says? Aye. Well, they'll not get away with this. No, we'll. we'll. march on the cemetery tomorrow night and lay down in front of their bulldozers. Well, you will, anyway. <laughs> I'm afraid my agoraphobia prevents me from taking part. I'll go and tell Mrs Coles and Claude we'll spread the word. Aye. They might be expecting our mind fig. Aye, true. Never underestimate your opponents, boys. Yeah. They might be going up there tonight to block the place off under cover of darkness just to catch us out like. I wouldn't put it past them. No, you boys i better get up there tonight and keep watch. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Just a bat, but... Ooh. Hey, hey, look up. That's friendly Griffiths' grandfather's grave, eh? Why? Oh, Isaac Griffiths, are you right, but? <coughs> All right, lads! <laughs> 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 oh, 
I'm glad this would be. Oh, Sergeant Blow, you scared the hell out of me, eh? Aye, oh, I'm me. Sorry, sorry. Just checking you're all right. Aye, we are. Considering, like. I've discovered a bit of information that may be of some use to you, lads. Oh, all right. Yes. Kevin Communications is owned by a character named Tarquin Thompson. And he has bankrolled Crowd's European election campaign to the tune of a hundred thousand quid this half year alone. I mean, it's, it's all legal, of course, but. They're all a bunch of. Bastards is the word I believe you're looking for. <laughs> and you. I'm a bastard myself. Yes, but you're a decent, respectable bastard. That's right enough. This Crowd is a, a nasty piece of work. He's obsessed with getting elected onto the EU gravy train, desperate to get out of Wales. Despite his public utterances, he hates the place. Anyway, there'll be an army of council workers here tomorrow night. I'm expecting trouble. You know, it's funny, but whenever I'm in a graveyard, I always get the feeling that the dead are watching me. Oh, it was horrible, fake. Like the Blair Witch Project, it was. Aye. It was like the dead were watching us. Oh, Sergeant Ball said they were, and he was right. Aye, we hadn't thought of it till then. No. Hey, listen to this. The Lord Mayor, Mr Yorworth Crood, told our reporter that vigilantism would not be tolerated and that skulls will be broken if anyone tries to prevent the disinternment process. Look, maybe you should stay at home, Mrs Applewhite. Oh, I'm going. I don't mind having my skull broken. <laughs> Mrs Davis Tophouse had her skull broken in Puthcall Fair and she's all right. <laughs> Except for being paralysed down one side. <laughs> Oh, no, Hoffman's right, ma'am. And it's going to be chucking it down tonight and all, according to Sean Lloyd. No, Richard, I'm going and that's final. Hey, look, it's Red Dog. Our martyrs must be respected indeed. All those unknown men and women who've struck blows against the English oppressor over the years. We don't need that you're with Croad to speak for us, no, no, no. He only says what he says to get the... Welsh speaking vote and to fulfill his own political ambitions. <laughs> I, the red dog, the key cork, and only, I'm the only true voice of Wales, not that jumped up fairy. <laughs> what a nutter. Oh. <laughs> he can't even speak English properly, man. Still, my enemy's enemy is my friend, so they say. Who says? <laughs> Well, no one says, Mum. It's just a saying, like. Oh. oh, I got an idea. I'm gonna go up the station and see Sergeant Ball. See if he can help us out using his contacts, like. I'll see you up the cemetery later. Mary. Good God, Mary! You look as though you've just swum the Bristol Channel. <laughs> Maybe they leave it tonight, Greg. Ah, son. They judge the inclement weather to be in their favour. They'll be there, even if they're going to wear diving suits. <laughs> they be off, then. Aye. Right. Into the valley of death rode the 600. Give a bell, ma'am. Well, nice hot cup of cocoa, I think. Sing us it! Sing us it! Sing us it! Sing us it! Sing Listen to me. Turn around and go home. I'm an unbending man. That's not what I yet. A man of conviction. There will be no lawless thuggery in my council area. We won't go until you promise not to dig up our relative. Your word, Crowd, does not respond to threats. Go home now while you still can. <laughs> you big pansy. Sticks and stones, Mrs. Coles, sticks and stones. <laughs> right, that's it, you had your warning. <laughs> Red 
Red dog. Croad! What is this? What are you doing here? To expose you, Croad. Oh, to expose you. Huh? This jumped up toward who speaks so eloquently about our history and our beloved martyrs. Oh, but he's shown his true colours tonight, Doyle. What do you mean? All this talk. And you're desecrating the resting place of one of the nation's great men. I don't know what the man's talking about. He's insane. Isaac Griffith, let his memory shine. The man who delivered a searing head wet to the puppet Lord Mayor of Bristol. And for that crime, he rotted for six months in an English jail. And he lies in this graveyard. And you want to consign Isaac's Griffith's mortal remains to a refrigerator in Ebouville? <laughs> Is that an act of a true Welshman, viewers? Hmm? Ask yourself when you cast your vote in those fascist European elections next month. You, out there, ask yourself. Uh, no, no, uh, this is... Uh, well, in light of this uh, new information, I will, of course, reconsider the situation. This graveyard is uh, safe in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> Well done, ma'am. Well done. And you, Offman, getting in touch with Rin Tin Tin like that was a stroke of genius worthy of me. Uh, oh, no greater compliment, Offman. Good one, Bert. Uh, that swine crowd won't recover from this. He can twist and turn as much as he wants. Your dad is safe, son. I'm going up the graveyard tomorrow to polish his headstone. He always liked that. <laughs> Richard Applewhite, Associated Webcams, how may I help you? <laughs> Aye. How much? Oh. Can you deliver? Right. I'll see you then, then. Ta-da, bud. Who was it, son? That was Shun Evans from Ebbervale. We was in the slammer together. He's delivering 15 freezers tomorrow afternoon at a snip. Never been used. <laughs> <laughs> Your whole business is looking up, boys. And it just goes to show the truth in that old proverb and all. What old proverb's that then, Fig? Every shroud has a silver lining. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Have a glass of this lovely, nasty spumante. <laughs> Fantastic. Cheers, Mrs. Hey, that's not Asti Spumante you've got there, mind. No, I don't like it. It gives me wind. Mine's a penis colada. <laughs> yes, to absent friends. Cheers. Cheers. And there's more from High Hopes at the same time next week. Next tonight on 2W, Newsnight.